Hey YouTubers, welcome to my channel. And if you're new here, my name is Victor Quintana and I upload weekly videos about photography, freelancing, and life as a creative. If this is your first time on the channel, welcome. It's great to have you here. And if you're a returning viewer, welcome back. I appreciate the support. In today's video, we'll be talking about the unofficial holy trinity of Leica zoom lenses for the Leica SL. So without further ado, let's roll the intro and get started. All right guys, so as you can see in front of me, I have three lenses. The Leica Super Vario LMR 1635 with an aperture of 3.5 to 4.5. The Leica Vario Elmerit SL 24 to 90 with an aperture of 2.8 to 4. And the Leica Apo Vario Elmerit SL 90 to 280, 2.8 to 4. Wow, that was a mouthful. Uh, with these three lenses, you can cover pretty much any focal length that you might ever need. The only exception I would have to say would be a dedicated 400 millimeter for wildlife or sports. But side note, since the Leica CL has the same L mount as the SL, but with an APS-C crop sensor, the SL90-280 when used on the CL, I believe it becomes a 135 to 420 millimeter, roughly. Yeah, that's pretty awesome. But more on that subject in another video. Now back to the lenses at hand. Now I'm sure you're looking at these lenses and thinking two things. One, in order to carry these three lenses in one pack, you might need to hire a donkey or a mule to carry the gear. And two, you're thinking, how the hell am I supposed to pay for these? Maybe you're debating about selling a kidney or bone marrow. I mean, you only need one kidney really, so more power to you. Uh, no, but in both cases, you're not wrong. You could not pay me enough to carry these three lenses in my day-to-day -day pack. The only time I would ever carry these three at the same time is if I'm traveling or on a big production where you never know if you're going to need that extra zoom or if you could really use the, the wide angle lens for something. But other than those two situations, I typically will only carry one or two at a time. My go-to is usually the 24 to 90, but sometimes, you know, I'll take the 16 to 35 and the 90 to 80. It just really depends on what I'm trying to shoot that day. As to your second point of them being very expensive, as a Leica shooter, I hear it all the time from other photography friends that shoot Canon, Nikon, Sony, uh, any other brand really. Oh wow, you shoot Leica? Must be nice to have money. Uh, yeah, it must be nice to have money. I mean, I wouldn't really know. Uh, yeah, I, I wouldn't know. My approach to buying Leica gear is just like anything else. You save money and you make sacrifices when you can. Maybe instead of spending $100 to go out with friends for drinks on a Friday night, you decide to stay in, save that money and put it towards a lens or a camera. Or instead of buying organic turmeric, whatever the hell that is, uh, maybe just buy a packet of emergency and call it a day. If you budget yourself and plan accordingly, you can afford a lot. Now, let's talk about the actual use of these three bad boys. Whether you're a portrait photographer, landscape photographer, or perhaps an architectural photographer, you're pretty much covered with this kit. The 60 and 35 will cover those wide angle shots of buildings. You can use it for car photography, street shots, food, and it even serves as a great vlogging lens. I personally don't use the SL, uh, with the 1635 for vlogging, instead I have a little Fuji X100. I know, I have another brand camera. Whatever, get over it. Uh, but I can carry that Fuji all day and hold it out in front of me for a substantially longer time than I would be able to with the SL with any of these lenses. But it's definitely possible. I mean, I see other photographers vlogging with the Canon 1DX Mark II or Mark III, uh, so it's definitely possible. One other thing I wanted to mention about the 16 35 well, I guess two other things. First one being that the zoom is actually an internal zoom, uh, so the lens doesn't expand when you zoom, which I think is a great feature for this lens. 
that is one downside to the 2490, I think, is that it does have the extending zoom barrel, making the lens, you know, substantially bigger. The 98-280 is like the 16 and 35 where the zoom is also internal, so that's a nice feature as well. The other thing I wanted to mention about the 16 and 35 is that it's actually a pretty good lens if you want to shoot some macro stuff. I didn't believe it at first, uh, but then I tried it out and I actually got pretty close to what I was photographing. I don't remember the exact uh, minimum focus distance. I'll put it down in the captions below, but, uh, but you can get some pretty close up macro shots with this lens. So it's pretty versatile. Definitely, definitely one of my favorites. Now, here are some images I've taken with the 1635. I've also included a couple other images from some other photographer friends that I have shot with the Leica 1635. Uh, so you can see a little bit more or less what you're able to achieve with this lens. Then you have the lens that I believe to be the all around go-to lens, which is the 24 to 90 millimeter. Most camera companies stick with the 24 to 70 range when it comes to this lens, but Leica being Leica decided to go a step further. And I have to say back in my Nikon days, there were definitely times that I was using my 24 to 70 and wished I had a little bit, just a little bit more zoom to get the shot I want. I've shot portraits, products, people, food, street, you name it. You really can do a little bit of everything with this lens. For most of my test shoots, uh, this is usually the only lens I bring with me. I leave both of these at home. Unless I'm going for a very specific look in my images, this is, this is it, man. This is the go-to. Uh, the other great thing about this lens uh, paired with the SL is that it is internally stabilized. Uh, so if you're shooting some videos handheld with the SL and 2490, it actually helps a lot with stabilization. Uh, you throw it into 120 frames per second and you got some really smooth slow motion. Uh, now with the SL2 that has in-body stabilization as well in the camera, pair it with this and I mean, you can grab 4K footage at 24 frames per second handheld and it's still gotta be pretty smooth. So that's that's pretty awesome. Uh, and here are some images I've taken with the 2490, again, along with some other featured photographers I asked to uh, send me some photos. At the other side of the spectrum, you have the 90 to 280. Uh, besides using this for landscapes and wildlife, I find myself using this lens the most to shoot videos. I really just love the separation from the subject and the background when you're shooting an interview style video or highlighting some sort of product. It gives a really nice, clean, crisp edge to your subject. And like I said earlier, uh, one of the great features is the fact that it does have the internal zoom, so that's really cool. Um, and again, pairing this with the Leica CL, you're gonna be using about a 135 to about a 420, something like that. Um, so this lens, although you might not use it that often, uh, when you want that extra zoom, this thing is this thing is key. And I'm telling you, the images from this are super crisp i love it and here are some images as well so you can see more or less what the 9280 can do so these are the three lenses i would recommend saving up for to create your first leica sl kit when I used to work for Leica, I would get the same questions over and over again. What lens should I buy? What lens should I invest in for my SL? Well, this video is my answer to your question. You can't go wrong with having the holy trinity of lenses in your camera kit. If I had to pick one to buy first though, definitely the 2490. And then after that, I'd probably jump into the 1635 and then the 9280. Uh, price points you're probably looking at about five grand and change, uh, another five grand change, and then the 9280 I believe is around like six grand and change. Uh, but I'll put links to all of them down in the captions below so you can check them out.
One thing I also wanted to mention, I know with the new release of the SL Sumicron line of prime lenses, you're seeing a lot of photographers training in their zoom lenses for the primes, which I totally get by the way. I mean, I myself, I own the Leica 75 Sumicron and I plan on getting the 35 Cron once it's more readily available. And trust me, I've eaten enough ramen to save up for it. So I should be good. But if you are new to the Leica world or you're just starting to get into photography, I would still advise you to go for the zoom lenses first and then build that kit because it's going to cover you for any job that you might come across. Uh, the prime lenses are awesome, especially as you can see. Whoops, we're good. Uh, the sheer size difference between the zoom lenses and the prime lenses. Uh, one thing to note, all the prime lenses are going to be exactly the same dimension. Um, doesn't matter the focal length, they're all going to be, you know, this width and this length. Uh, so I think that's pretty cool. Uh, but as you can see, it's substantially smaller, a lot less uh, weight to carry in your pack if you're carrying all the prime lenses. But like I said, if you're starting out as a new photographer or new to Leica, you know, it's it's nice to just be able to carry one lens like the 2490, which will cover mostly everything that you're going to be wanting to shoot anyways. The cool thing about these prime lenses uh, at the time of this recording, I believe they have the 90, uh, this 75, a 50 and a 35. And then they have a roadmap for more lenses that are gonna include a 28, a 24, and I believe a 21. They are all F2. Uh, so I think that's pretty awesome. And like I said, they're all the exact same size. So that's, that's a pretty cool feature as well. So with that being said, in the pipeline, I also have a video that will go over the Supercron line of prime lenses. And I'm also working on a video that will highlight each of the zoom lenses individually, showing performance, details, and build quality. So stay tuned for those. Hope you guys have a great rest of your day and thank you for taking the time to watch this video. If you enjoyed the video, let me know by clicking the thumbs up button. And if you haven't subscribed, it's that little red rectangle button down to the bottom right of the video, just in case you missed it. If there's any other topic you would like me to cover pertaining to Leica or the Leica SL line, let me know in the comments below. But until next time, stay safe, stay distant, wash your hands. See you guys later.